today. There are some wild solutions to the melting 4090s. Intel's 14th gen is more power hungry than ever. NVIDIA is teaming up with Intel to make GPUs. And NVIDIA's ultimate RTX 4090 Ti is on the way. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, if you saw my recent video, you know that people are still having issues with RTX 4090s melting. Well, it looks like we weren't the only ones who noticed, as two GPU makers have a solution with two very different approaches. The products were shown off at this year's Computex, with the first being from MSI. This one, I have to admit, is a bit odd, but simple. Basically, they developed a dual-color PSU cable that tells you when your connector isn't properly inserted. As you can see, the connector is yellow on the end, and the idea is that if you can see any of the yellow, it's not properly inserted. If you can't, you're good to go. Now, some would argue that the fact that this has to exist is proof that the cable isn't designed well. And I definitely get that, especially if the recent cases are right and that they were inserted properly to begin with. Maybe they came out over time, I'm not sure, but this solution would still help. The second solution is way more drastic. It comes from ASUS, and it actually foregoes the power connector altogether. The card on display here is an RTX 4070, but just like the new connector, it can deliver up to 600 watts of power. What's wild is that it's a PCI Express style connection that slots into the motherboard. It's ultimately made for a Zeus's new motherboard that takes all the connectors and moves them to the back. So this wasn't necessarily made to fix the melting GPUs, but it likely would. The issue is obviously that it's proprietary, so you'd have to buy Zeus's specific motherboard for this. So it's not a very practical solution, but it's definitely interesting. And if you'd like to come up with new hardware designs like this, it may be time for you to learn computer science. And there's no better place to get started than with today's sponsor, Brilliant, the online learning platform that was built specifically to teach the STEM field, which I obviously includes computer science. What makes Brilliant so special and why I recommend them so much is the way they teach you. It's not about memorizing a bunch of formulas or listening to boring lectures. Instead, Brilliant teaches you by getting you to do it yourself. And they do that with interactive puzzles that make learning some really complicated subjects fun. See, they start out small with very basic concepts that they build on until you realize you actually understand how it works. And now's the best time to try it because when you visit Brilliant.org GamerMeld, you can try it out for 30 days free. Plus, when you sign up using Brilliant.org slash GamerMeld, you'll get 20% off the annual premium. Once again, that's Brilliant.org slash GamerMeld. Next up for today, it looks like Intel's next-gen desktop CPUs are said to be even more power-hungry than their current-gen parts. According to a new report from WCCF Tech, a vendor at Computex mentioned that they received a BIOS for Intel's Raptor Lake refresh a week ago. And yes, that essentially confirms that Intel's next-gen CPUs are in fact that rumored refresh of Raptor Lake. That coincides with recent rumors that claim Intel canceled Meteor Lake for the desktop, so we're effectively left with a refresh. And according to the report, multiple motherboard vendors at Computex announced refreshed motherboards. These boards feature updated VRM designs with one in particular, the Phantom Gaming Nova Wi-Fi 7, specifically states that it supports more high power, future CPUs. Of course, Raptor Lake CPUs are already very power hungry, so anything more is set to be pretty wild. According to WCCF Tech, for that higher power draw, we're likely set to see between 6.2 and 6.5 gigahertz. So a bit of a bump, but at what cost? And next up, it looks like Intel could be set to make NVIDIA's next-gen GPUs. That's right. While in Taiwan, Tom's Hardware attended a question-and-answer session with NVIDIA's own CEO, Jensen Huang. During it, Mr. Huang outright stated that they're open to work with Intel. Apparently, NVIDIA is in the process of trying to diversify their chip manufacturing. He stated, quote, you know that we also manufacture with Samsung, and we're open to manufacturing with Intel. Pat has said in the past that we're evaluating the process, and we recently received the test chip results of their next generation process, and the results look good. What's wild is that Intel could already be teamed up with NVIDIA, as they claimed back in January that they added a leading cloud, edge, and data center provider as a customer for their Intel 3 process. Of course, that could be quite a few different companies, but NVIDIA certainly fits the bill. That deal is 
set to begin manufacturing in the second half of this year. Either way, it's clear that Nvidia is happy with Intel's next-gen node, so there's a chance that Nvidia's next-gen gaming cards can actually be built by Intel instead of TSMC or Samsung. That would obviously be a pretty big blow against TSMC, but they certainly aren't hurting for customers right now anyway. Regardless, there are some challenges for Nvidia. The CEO mentioned, for example, that a single DGX system has over 35,000 components from multiple suppliers, so making a switch like this wouldn't be easy. Then again, that's where something a bit simpler comes into play, like their gaming GPUs. Time, as always, will tell. And lastly for today, at Computex, a number of GPU manufacturers showed off next-generation cooling designs, with one that leads us to believe they're gearing up for a 4090 Ti release. In fact, many of their designs are likely made for a higher-end GPU because they're all trying to get more and more cooling to GPUs, which also means GPUs are likely set to get even more power-hungry in the future. Either way, there was a very interesting one specifically from MSI. The cooler uses a different kind of fin design that actually mixes aluminum and copper fins to take advantage of the cooling properties of both. The cooler itself is obviously a prototype, but the demo used an RTX 4090 Supram X, which means this design is at least made for a 4000 series card. And given we know this is for upcoming cards, as Video Cards mentions, it may later be used on Nvidia's RTX 4090 Ti, which means the rumored card is likely coming, and it means bigger and more power-hungry GPUs. Let's just hope we don't see even more fried power connectors. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for even faster GPUs or are you just ready for lower power draw? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day.